Yeah. If you weren't born with it, you can heal from it. It's a journey, it's hard, it's traumatic, it takes time, but you can do it. I believe in you, most I believe in you, you can do it. Yeah. It's a mindset, we have to be disciplined, we have to be focused, and we need support around us to do it. But ultimately, it's your journey, and if you've got a health condition right there, it's your journey, and you can, and you can reverse this, and you can heal from it, and you can get well. Shalom, welcome to the Health Fellowship. This is Junior Priest of the Health Ranger, and yeah, this is, the, this is um, our concluding series of the Micron Beyond Part 4 and today we're going to be talking about eating our gut healthy so the foods and the drinks and things that we can put in our body to help us heal our microbiome, our gut and to restore any kind of health concerns. We mentioned about the foods in the past so now I'm going to go straight into it and talk about something called ACV and you may have heard it before but it's basically it's, a, it's an abbreviation for apple cider vinegar. So there's um. The one we talk about, we call apple cider vinegar in terms of, with the, with the name, with the mother or raw. And when you hear the, the name mother, it's, but in terms of health and nutrition, we always go back to, to mother nature. So mother nature and foods that come from mother nature from the ground, or from the moss, I should say, is raw food. So, um, so when you're going for apple cider vinegar, ensure it's always got the word mother in it. And that means it's got all the enzymes and vitamins. It's 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 raw. It hasn't been refined or processed, and nothing added to it. And that's the one that helps detox your body and cleanses your liver and your gut. So um, I'm just going to talk about the benefits of um, apple cider vinegar. So I've talked about which one to get, um, and now I'm just going to mention about the benefits. So. First, I talk about weight loss and how it enhances weight loss. So, um, you can, so it helps food to digest faster, and it breaks down starches and complex sugars. And there's ways you can have apple cider vinegar. Um, it also lowers cholesterol, reducing inflammation, um, helps with your absolute, absolute acid reflux in, in in your body as well to help reduce that. It re regulates your blood sugar levels. So, um, if you've got, if you're struggling with them. Um, yeah, um, blood sugar levels that are high. The good thing, I'm just going to give you a kind of a, an a analogy what to do and how to, you know, bring it. So, in the morning is a good time, in the morning or before lunch. So, it's always good to have it before you have something to um, eat. So, in the morning, you can have it with um, two, te two teaspoons of, of apple cider vinegar, one teaspoon of raw honey, Hopefully, if it's wild honey or raw, then better really. And a glass of water. So you mix it down, and then you drink it, and then that's a good way. That that will help regulate everything in your body, and then also helps you lose weight as well. So um, another way you can you can have it as well. Introduce it. You can have it in in your salad, so you can sprinkle it on your salads. And so that's that's the main two that you can use it. You can put it in other dishes as well, but I'll just say for, to start off with, if, you've, if you're just introducing it into your diet, then start on them two basic ones for now. So um, it's, a, it's also a natural energy drink, and um, it helps, it can help um, remove warts as well, cures bad breath, and, um, and also helps um, to soothe like sore throats. So I'm um, just going to uh, kind of give you an idea of where to get it from. There's, you can get it from Harlan and Barrett. You, um, the one that I've usually got for is called Braggs, B R A G G S. Uh, but I would say really, just do your homework and, and ensure that you know if you if you are going to get it, make sure it has the word with the mother or mother, because then you know it's um, it's got all the good bacteria stuff that's in it. It hasn't been processed or refined. Um, when I purchased um, some previously, I actually bought them from B and M, which is a local shop, and um, I think I got it for two pounds. And I knew it had um, the right stuff because when I shook it all up at the bottom, you could see where it was kind of where it fermented at the bottom. If you shook it all up, shaked it all up, you could, I could tell that he um, that he had 
it started floating around, all the bits inside floating around, you're thinking, oh, what's this? But, um, but that's the good stuff, that's the stuff that you want to help heal. So um, don't be afraid of it, don't think it's going to like, it's going to cause harm, it's actually going to heal. So I would encourage you to introduce this, you know, it's a superfood and something that's going to really benefit, benefit, yeah. If I didn't mention it gives you energy, also gives you energy as well. So you can use it as an energy, energy drink if you've, before working out, after working out, exercise, or just as I say, in the mornings. So yeah, so, so we've talked about um, apple cider vinegar. Now I want to go to about fermented foods. So fermented foods, you probably have them every single day and don't realise what you're having, you know, from bread, from cheese, yoghurt, dark chocolate. So but there's, there's different forms of apple, um, fermented foods. So the ones I want to talk about now, fermented foods, there's another, there's another name for it called cultured foods. So it's, a, it's actually a, a pasteurising process that it does and it adds texture and flavour to the foods and the drinks that you, you have. And also, the main thing I want to, I want to bring to it really is that when you, when you introduce fermented foods, it builds good probiotic bacteria to your diet. So this is something that, if you've not done it before, it may seem a bit strange doing it or even when you're tasting it, but it's about trying different ways. So I'm just going to kind of introduce and let you know how, which ones you can do. So the first one is called sauerkraut, which basically it's, a, it's just known as sour cabbage basically. So you can either use red and green cabbage, but the way to ferment it is it has to be fermented with brine, so that's water and salt, and then you put it in a jar chop it down, put it in a jar, and you can store it in the fridge. The storing process is a process that ferments it. The longer it stores, the longer it ferments, the better it is. And you can stay for very, for quite long as well. So that's um, sauerkraut, it's um, S-A-U. I don't want to spell it, it's quite a long word to spell. Um, so another one, fermented food, is called kimchi. And the, if you look at the, some of these sounds, they, they originate from South Asian cultures like Japan, China, they use it, um, but as you know, we can, we can introduce these foods because the basic foods, you know, cabbage, but kimchi, kimchi is another one, but this one's got a lot more ingredients, so it gives it a bit more flavour, and it's something that, that I know, that I really enjoy adding to a dish, I know it's going to get all that, that, I know it's healing, I know it's bringing all like, the good enzymes to my body, the minerals, so with kimchi, it's um, some of the ingredients that I've used, is cabbage, carrots, onion, garlic and ginger, you can also use, add, chili peppers to it as well, red or green, you can add um, red peppers to it as well. So it just gives you that taste and if you've got that all in the jar fermenting, you can just take a bit of that, pull it to a dish that you're adding, maybe you're adding potatoes, or you're adding um, a, a dish in terms of lentils or beans, it's just something that complements it and also you know you're getting all these good um, enzymes into your body and, and encouraging that really. So yeah. Um, another one is kefir which is a fermented milk. Um, pickles, you've probably seen them before in the shop pickles. The problem with pickles, I'll be careful with pickles, is that if you're going to do it, buy your own pickles and put them in a the jar, cut them up and do it yourself with, um, with the um, brine or salted water, as I said, because what happens is when you, when you tend to buy pickles from the shop, if you look at um, the ingredients list, you'll see that, that they use vinegar. So with vinegar, it's not the right thing. You need to have salt and water to make it ferment. So that's just something to kind of um, let you know, really. And um, other fermented foods, are, as you may know, is obviously cheese, yogurt, dark chocolate, um, bread, and, um, and wine. Um, just to touch on bread, um, if you're going to have bread, then try your best to have um, whole meal bread, not white bread, because it strips out all of the, um, it's processed, it strips out all of the, um, the good minerals and vitamins in it, so it's got, really got no benefits to it really, apart from making you feel full, <laughs> and that's about it. So, um, um, so go for um, whole meal. Some of the benefits of fermented foods and drinks I've just mentioned, I'm just going to touch on them really. So, improves digestion. It suppresses bad bacteria like yeast and high pylori. Um, it's got anti-cancer cancer effects, so it helps. It helps um, if someone's got cancer, for instance, right here, it will, it, will, it will suppress or destroy or, or break down it dividing and multiplying. So, it also an enhances other nutrients that you add into your body as well. It reduces symptoms of lactose intolerance, improves arthritis symptoms as well, and it treats things like you know IBS, which is anti-inflammatory um, bowel and bowel disease or or syndrome. Okay, so these foods are quite if you've not had them before, they've got a very quiet taste. Um, but my thing is just just go basic for now. You know, if you want to just try 
you know, just a cabbage and onion and and the garlic with the water and brine and, and try that. And then the more you get used to it, then you can try different flavors and different tastes. So um, so these are just um, you know, foods that you don't really, you don't really, we don't really eat every day. But as I'm saying, if you've got a condition in terms of you know a gut condition, um, if you've got um, digestive problems, struggling with constipation, struggling with um, colitis, Crohn's, and these kind of various you know conditions, then it's good to introduce these foods because they're going to bring a lot of benefits and help to heal, as I mentioned earlier. So um, try it and you know just see you know it's it, there's no harm. Sometimes we have to kind of have a look at what we're eating, and sometimes we eat tend to eat the same foods all the time. And I think we have to be adventurous, you know, when we talk about the amount of fruits and vegetables and things that we can just add a little touch to that can, that can change the taste of it and also kind of um, help us to change, you know, what we eat and obviously help our diets and our health as well. So um, I'm going to move on to now um, my favourite and this is the one that I love and I, I could do a whole topic on this one and there's so much benefits to it. Is, is, is a mass and, and I always say, I always call it hope juice um, and it's known as celery juice and you know you probably already introduce celery in your diet already when you put it in your salads or when you cook it in stews or, or soup um, but what I want to introduce with celery is to try it and juice so if you have um, various conditions, ailments or you know or even you've got a disease, digestive problems Celery juice is something that is for me be the first on the list, apart before fasting, actually after fasting. Because fasting is the ultimate. <laughs> Thank you for the more slide for that. Yeah, because that that is the, the I've mentioned that in the last series, so I won't probably go too much into it. But fasting is is the um, is the miraculous pill. That's what I say. Yeah. So let's not not digress. Go back to celery juice because I'm <laughs> I get ahead of myself. So. Celery juice, yeah, so some of it starves, back, starves um, bad bacteria in your gut, things like, you know, that yeast, you know, because we're eating especially from bread or if you've got mould or fungi, so it starves that, it alkalizes the gut, it contains 60 plus trace minerals, so that alone, you're probably going to get all your minerals in here anyway, um, it moves heavy metal toxins from your gut, also from your brain, um, and it raises um, HCA, which is Hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So, hydrochloric acid, I'm not going to go too scientific and too technical, it's um, something that is a line of our, st of, of, our st of our stomach, and what it does, it helps break down the foods and the, and the nutrients of the foods that we eat and, and absorbs it to the right places. So, if, for instance, if, you're, if you've had a lot of processed foods, taken a lot of tablets, antibiotics, um, these are things that can actually destroy alcohol as well, destroy your hydrochloric acid. So to repair your hydrochloric acid, then you need to bring things in that's going to prepare that and help heal your body and heal people. Because if, you're, if your gut lining is um, compromised, shall I say, or starts to become weak and it doesn't do the job it's, it's supposed to do, then you start have something called leaky gut. If you have leaky gut, then you start to have a whole mass of um, conditions. Um, and I'll mention some of them here. Uh, Hashimoto's, Lyme, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, liver de um, detoxifiers. So just, just some of the things I've, I've just talked about here, colitis, um, Crohn's. So it, it's, it's, it's just really, really crucial that we, when we look at our hydrochloric acid, that we use things that's going to, that we use it, that you know, try, trying to heal our hydrochloric acid so that when we have these foods or when we drink celery juice, it's going to heal, it's going to repair our hydrochloric acid. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that if we've got something that's going on, what we've done to, we're trying to repair the damage that we've done. And celery juice will do that. So, some of the benefits as I said to celery juice um, is, may include. And I've probably mentioned it in a presentation already, but I'm just gonna, if I'm repeating myself then, <laughs> it's, it's most of the fruit and veg and things that we eat, some of them do have, they work the same, you know, they do some, some simultaneously, they work the same. So, um, so it's incredible for constipation, digestive issues, skin conditions like eczema, acne, psoriasis, it flushes toxins and pathogens, I mentioned it about flushing 
pathotoxins from your gut and from your brain already. Um, it fights autoimmune disease, so that's things like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's, and Lyme, lupus. See, I'm, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so it um, eliminates mucus, and as I said, what else was that? Apple cider vinegar. So that's two things I've introduced today, which you can, if you suffer with, you know, mucus and things that's in your in your body, there's two things you can bring in. Um, it enhances the immune system. It's good for your brain health. Helps with depression, um, anxiety, brain fog. It helps repair your central nervous system. But obviously, that's linked to your brain. Um, and other things like you know ADHD, OCD, um, and PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder, or if you've been in um, slavery, post-traumatic slave disorder. <laughs> I'm not joking about that because that is a serious thing as well. Yeah. So, celery juice, bring it in, introduce it. Uh, very cheap. What I will say about it is that you know I buy mine from Lidl, 50p for one. I usually buy two. I have two a week. So when I fast, I always introduce it on a, on a when I fasted, so after I fasted, that, that's what something I will use to break my fast is celery juice because I know there's nothing in my body, nothing in there. After eight hours, your body digests um, through your system. So I know that um, celery juice is something that I'm gonna introduce straight away. Um, with that, I probably get about eight ounces. Five to eight ounces is okay if you're, you know, got no kind of concerns or conditions. If you have, a serious health condition in terms of a gut condition then I would say try to introduce between 8 to 16 ounces a day um, sounds quite expensive but I think sometimes we don't we, we can't put a price on health you know sometimes we go to a shop and we buy you know big trainers and you know we go and buy the biggest bag and we and we'll buy things that, that 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 we don't really see the benefit to but when it comes to our health, you know, 50p a pound for two set of juices, if you look at that for the month, it's going to cost less than a pair of trainers. And, you know, you know that it's going to, you will see the benefits. Um, don't, don't take my word for it if you don't trust me. Um, just look on um, YouTube, look on Google, and you'll see, you'll see thousands of testimonials of people that have healed serious skin conditions health conditions just by using celery juice that's why i said i could talk about this for the whole of this of this same topic but i won't because um, um just touch on it really so introduce it um it's, it's it's quite nice actually as well very nice i like it now i think it's you get used to it but um just you know i'm gonna keep going and going about it but yeah so introduce it as, as you can what i didn't say which i was meant to say so i'm glad to come back to me thank you yahuwah um is that don't worry about if, if, you, if you've got someone that worries about pesticides and herbicides and how it's grown, because what happens is when you juice, um, when you juice, for instance, the most of the pesticides stays in the actual fiber. So once you juice, you lose the fiber. I'm gonna to touch that on the last topic of, of today about juicing and smoothies and what happens. So don't worry about the pesticides. So, you know, it's when you're eating it, that's when you gotta worry about the pesticides because it, they, Pesticides like retaining the fiber, but once you juice, you lose the fiber. And I was talking about what um, the benefits of juicing will be on, on the last um, slide. So, awesome! Don't go out there, get your celery juice wherever you get it from. Just bring it into your into your diet. Um, whether it's once a week, just take your time and just um, and just work with it because I guarantee you, you know, it will work with you. Hallelujah, praise you. So, we've just touched on the celery juice. Now, another topic, fibre. Before I talk about fibre and gut health, you, um, there's a, there was a, a, a doctor by the name of Dr. Dennis Berkey, and he was around in the 1970s, I think he died in 1993, um, and he did a lot of work in, in Africa and South Africa, and, um, and also, sorry, in England and America. And what he looked at was the variation of fibre and diet and the Western diet and countries of the third world where they don't, where they have more fibre compared to what we do in England and America, and we don't, you know, we tend not to have much fibre. And he looked at the correlation of in his whole twenty years, he said in uh, in Africa he removed for in twenty years he did one operation and removed one gallstone of one African person in in um, in Africa. And basically what he was saying was that because 
people that live in fellow countries, they tend to eat, maybe the, you know, because of funds and advice, they tend to grow their own food and eat their own food that's plant-based. And he was saying that because they get a lot of fibre in their diet, um, they don't tend to get the diseases that, that the Western world get in terms of, i.e. American, England. So, so this, um, this slide here is really going to focus and hit hard and, and fibre and what it does for our gut and how you know, we need to eat more fibre because we're clearly not eating enough fibre. Because if you're not eating plants and veg and fruit, then you're eating more processed foods because we need to eat. And so, so, um, so just going to talk about the fibre and the gut health. So fibre, just to let you know what it is if you don't know what it is. It's a, it's a carbohydrate that's found, in, found only in plants and, and it cannot be broken down in the stomach. And you think, what do you mean it can't be broken down in the stomach? So basically, what it does, it doesn't get broken down in the, in the stomach, it gets broken down in the gastrointestinal tract, which is the GI tract basically. And that's what it, and it helps form our stools. So, so, it's, um, so just talk about a few things. It's, it's beneficial for um, for preventing constipation. So when I mentioned about it goes through, it doesn't go through the stomach, it, goes through, it breaks down through the GI tract. That's why that's why it helps to release if you've got constipation. Um, that's what's good for. And it also while it's, while it's doing that, it goes through a cleaning cleanse process. So it actually cleans your the GI tract as well. So it's, it's also so it's a it's a double whammy. You know, it's 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 amazing. It's actually benefiting your GI tract, helping constipation, and 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 then bring and then clean as well so and then on top of that it protects you from from having a um, collectible uh, cancer which is colon cancer so um so if that's one thing i could just say about fiber <laughs> that'd be enough because as you know especially i'd say in um, in today's um day and age you know cancer is really really serious and it's hitting a lot of people and there's a lot of deaths and a lot of people are receiving, I say receiving, are being diagnosed with cancer and it's hurting people and it's destroying families and destroying lives. So, um, and you know, and I always say this, if you, if, you, if you weren't born with it, then you can heal from it. And if you want to heal from it, what you need to do is find the source. You find the root, then you get to the source. You find the source, then you can heal. That's, I always say that this is key, yeah? If you weren't born with it, you can heal from it. It's a journey, it's hard, it's traumatic, it takes time, but you can do it. I believe in you, the more so I believe in you, you can do it, yeah? It's a mindset, we have to be disciplined, we have to be focused, and we need support around us to do it. But ultimately, it's your journey, and if you've got a health condition right here, it's your journey, and you can, and you can reverse this, and you can heal from it, and you can get well. Hallelujah. So, sorry, I have to get serious sometimes because um, I'm very passionate about this and it's, you know, it's, it's really important that we know we look at our health. A lot of people say health is wealth, but um, no, nah, wealth is wealth and health is health to me. Yeah. Anyway, carrying on. Yeah. So, so um, I'm just going to touch on now about the, the risks of low fibre intake and what it does to um, our bodies and, you know, why we need to have more fibre in. So, um, so people that have um, that the risk is you, you, you can contract something called a, a deficiency in fibre, um, so become fibre deficient basically, um, and this can result in a, a, a fluctuation of cholesterol levels up and down um, in your body, and then also an increase of body weight and, and, and constipation. That's because of the, there's not enough fibre going through the system to kind of help. Um, control moving on now to weight control because that's what this what fiber is um, beneficial for and good for as well yeah so it helps reduce hunger it's a powerful detoxifier i've mentioned it about the gi tract but it detoxifies through you know for your system as well um, it removes toxins and it's a great source of um, antioxidants um, that protect the body and when i talk about antioxidants i always talk about about it it's a great it protects from free radicals free radicals is cell damage so I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you cut an apple in half, a green apple, and leave it, you see it go, you see it go brown. Some of the foods we introduce in our body does that to our body, does that to our cells. So processed foods, um, sugars, refined sugars, shall I say, um, 
creeps on healthy fats, saturated fats. Some saturated, uh, some saturated fats are good, obviously, like olive oil, coconut oil, nuts and seeds, and, um, and avocado, you know, my favourite. But when I'm talking about unhealthy fats, you know, the, the things that are junk food, things that are fried, like, you know, pastries and cakes and all those kind of things that are yummy and so tasty and we like them, don't go and eat one right now. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and then um, I'm going to give you a tip as well, which is something that I've learned as well over time from doing my studies, is that if you do your own research and start looking into health foods and, and looking at what, what foods are good for you, it actually prevents you from wanting to eat those bad foods because you, you read about it and you think, I know what to do to my body. And then it prevents you and stops you thinking, no, I don't want to do that. So it's actually a good indicator. So um, it's good to watch YouTube videos. And yes, you know, so, um, make sure you watch all our videos on, on how the fellowship because they're awesome, edifying, and it's to build a body as well as the mind and everything else. But sometimes it's good to do your own research. And um, because as I was saying, that's just a, another teaching I just gave you there, really, just to help you on your journey. So, so, um, so we just talked about obviously, you know, the benefits of you know a fibre, the intake, and what it does, obviously, about concentration. Now, also touched on about we've just I've just mentioned about cancer, so I will quickly bring that about cancer and fibre. So, um, fruits and veg are the only are very high in fibre, and um. And they're, and they're very rich, obviously, these are, you know, very colourful foods. And they're also, they're also linked to, if you, if you introduce these sorry, into your diet, they're linked, obviously, to lower, lower um, rates of cancer. The same. Um, so, introduce these foods into, into your um, fibre, into your body. And as I say, fibre, you cannot get fibre, you can't get fibre from anything but anything that's grown from the ground. I'm trying to say anything about it, right? unless someone's made something else they can think of. But <laughs> I'm just talking about, you know, veg, fruit, your nuts, your seeds, and then um, your superfoods, things like, you know, spirulina and wheatgrass and wheat bran and barley and things like that. Um, so, um, yeah, so really, really beneficial to kind of bring it in. Um, what I would say about cancer as well is that, you know, we've talked about fibre and what fibre does. So, you know, the main cause that it does is prevent colon cancer. So, you know, introduce these, you know, introduce these kind of foods that kind of help that really as well. Yeah. So, um, one thing I, I, I want to touch on now as well is uh, the, the arguments around juicing and having smoothies. And I'm aware that, because I know that I have, I have, I have both. I introduce um, smoothies. For me, a smoothie in the morning is my breakfast. And, you know, I will, I've mentioned in previous talks about the 80 20 rule. And obviously, 80% 80, 80 eating healthy, 20% eating relaxed. So, you know, having a treat with, you know, with, your, with your family, your friends, you know, if you're going out for a birthday meal or going out with, with people, you know, you know, have a treat because food, you are supposed to enjoy food. And when we have, you know, when we feast, you know, obviously not the Maldian feast I'm talking about now, but when we feast, yeah, it's a time of celebration, it's a time, you know, to get together and share. So, so you know, I'm not this strict regiment because I do myself, you know, I'm a half ranger, but, so, you know, 8 to 20 rules good. If you're somebody who's got a, a debilitating disease like cancer um, or heart, you know, heart disease, um, if you've got rheumatoid arthritis, then I would, I would suggest you go on a strict, a strict, um, I would say 40 days is completion, 40 day completion, or you say even three months, but 40 days to three months of, you know, of a process of restoring your health, of, um, you know, I think some people say you can't cheat, you can't cheat when it comes to health, but um, if you've got this kind of condition, then it's really important that you, you start to repair and you start to try and introduce you know, that way, you know, it's a long time, it seems long, but the more you do it, the more days you do it, the easier it becomes. And um, it's any kind of anything you do forms a habit, you know. It's people that smoke, people that take drugs. It's a habit that the process, that drink alcohol, you know, if you, if you watch, I don't want to talk about, you know, going on your phones and things like that. Everything is habit, so it's about balance. It's about introducing it to kind of health. So, 
Going back to um, so going back to the smoothies now, yeah. So smoothie in the morning um, helps you with um, breakfast. You know, with a smoothie it helps give you restore, gives you much energy. It fills you up and sustains you as well for um, until lunchtime or if you know like me, I like to have a mid snack as well, like at eleven o'clock. So so then the um, so the difference between juice and smooth and juicy, okay, yeah. So. Both are essential and good for, for your health, both are. Um, so with, with smoothies, you have a, like a, for instance, a nutri bullet. It, it blends everything up, so if you put in oats, nuts, seeds, banana, pineapple, could be almond milk or water. Um, you can use cow's milk, some people do as well. You know, that's fine, it's up to, that's up to you really. Um, and once it blends it, it, it breaks, it, it doesn't break, it breaks it down, but it still retains all the fiber. You couldn't eat all that in one go, but with the, with, with a smoothie, it still retains the fibre. So you, as I mentioned about the fibre, you still get all of the um, good benefits of it as well, and then so and then that's absorbed to the body. So juicing is different. And I mentioned about celery juicing. So you know, juicing is things like you know, if you're going to juice celery juice, or uh, if you can do a green juice, so it could be cabbage, spinach, Brussels sprouts. Um, uh, I've said spinach already. <laughs> Just a green juice, basically, or pear as well. So anything green, you can put in it. Um, so with them, um, with with the green juice, with juicing, celery juice, good one. Apple and carrot, apple on its own. And I know the whole um, the theory of some people like, oh, I don't have certain um, foods because they're hybrids and I can't, you know, I can't eat them. Or I don't want to touch go near them. There's, there's there's many accounts of of people that have healed themselves just by having uh, having carrot juice, just by having that in their diet of um of having you know carrot juice and you know and 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 cleansing from that from cancer. So and the whole thing about actually I'm gonna go on to something else now about garlic and about it's a poison and not to have it now. So I was reading a scripture the day. And when I seen the word garlic in there, I was like, I'm just going to debunk that theory right there, yeah? And I don't want to hear it, oh, you know, that wasn't the same garlic it was then, or such and such. Because if you're going to remove garlic from your diet, the amount of benefits it's got right here, then you need to remove everything else. You need to remove everything else that you're going to eat. I'm talking about the healthy foods, yeah? Use garlic, it's so good for you, it's beneficial. Moving back on that, okay, yeah? So, juicing, yeah? So with the juicing, so it removes the fibre, but what it does, it retains all the vitamins and minerals. So if you need to heal from cancer or any kind of debilitating disease, it is a concentrated way to heal, and it, and, it, and, it, and it basically gets all of the nutrient vitamins, and it hits the point straight and detoxifies, and, and, and detoxifies the body straight away. So it, it, it uses the immune system uses that and it calls and it pushes straight to where it needs to go to. So if you have like a, a smoothie, it takes time to go through the system. For instance, you drink water, you know it's going to go straight through and flush straight through. If you have, if you have a, a, if you start juicing, then it hits the point. All the vitamins, minerals, they get straight to the point. You know, ASAP. So just to kind of recap, apple cider vinegar. Make sure it's got the word mother in it because that's the one you want, so that's the one that's going to have all the, the enzymes that are beneficial bacteria in. Yeah, fermented foods, in experiment, you know, try to do the, you know, the different ones with the cabbages and adding carrots and onions and garlic and ginger and just see how it tastes, you know, um, you'll get used to it. Uh, celery juice, my favourite, you know, don't stop that. And if you don't do it yet, as I said, bring it in, you know, always going to be the one that you have to really, you have to bring in. That's, that's, you know, in terms, of, in terms of, you know, removing, you know, things like heavy metals, uh, you know, from, from your, from the brain and from the body, you know, there, there's two key things that, you know, that I'd say, you know, celery juice, blueberries, you know, dates, there's a few other things as well, and then um, I might have to do a teaching on that one day as well, uh, just basically on how to heal from and heavy metal toxicity in our body. And then, yeah, and obviously, you know, fibre and gut health and um, introducing there's, there's, you know, if you go to the shops and you see the amount of fruits and vegetables and how colourful it is, you know, it's just a rainbow. So, 
introduce different things and just try, you know, try them in different formats and um, and see and see how you get on. So yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this um, this topic. You know, it's been it's been great and you know talking about it's a seven step healing plan. You know, I've already gone to the third one, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure I bring all the rest of it out. But I'll link into other um, topics about what I'm going to do. The next topic I'm going to focus on, which is um, a big one, and um, I want to do it because I want people to, there's a lot of people out there that, that are deficient. So the next topic I'm going to, or the next teaching, will be on deficiency disease. And I can't find the word now. <laughs> but basically, it's, um, it was deficiency and disease, mate. That's the main two, really. And obviously, uh, antioxidants, that was it, sorry, antioxidants. So, so introducing, you know, if we've got deficient, why would, you know, there's a lot of deficiencies going on, whether it's iron, whether it's copper, and some of them are linked to the same things as well. So um, people have got diabetes and, you know, all sorts of Crohn's and lupus. And, you know, debil debilitating diseases that kind of cause people to be in pain, and, you know, chronic fatigue and, you know, lacking energy and, you know, so, so I'm just going to, you know, I want to bring these, I want to bring in these, these topics that are going to help restore and hopefully bring us back to a place where we know that we feel good. You know, another one thing I'm going to finish on really is, um, is exercise, um, you know, which is good for stress. You know, we live in a, in a society now where stress is, is, is on us from the moment we wake up. So, um, you know, from our jobs, from raising children, from, you know, just living a, 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 a daily life, you know. So, um, so exercise, I'm not actually to go out there and run a marathon, you know, but do something that you enjoy, you know, movement is key, you know, whether you're going up and go for a walk, you know, getting out of the house and, and just going for a walk, getting out of the car, getting out of the office, you know, you've had the lunch, go for a walk, you know, you know, and I always say you, you cannot be angry or be in a mood or feel depressed in nature, so connect back with nature, you know, this is where we're supposed to be, especially us, you know, you know, as Hebrew, you know, as Hebrews, this is where we come from, man. You know, we we people that have been in nature. So, so, and you know, and if you and if you're not, if you've not accepted Yahushua Hamashiach as your savior, then today is a day of salvation. There's no time at the present. So, um, so, um, continue to stay, um, um, to stay tuned in to Ahava and to receive all of the great teachings that that myself and Brother Raw Heat and Pastor Pastor Gary and and Brother Shuki as well that we deliver on the page. And other you know presentation that um, Pastor Gary brings on, just you know I encourage you to stay tuned, um, subscribe, hit the bell, as Pastor Gary always says, and shalom to you and thank you for um, watching. Me. Take care. Hey, 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 no way.